with poetry, I feel like sometimes it gets like capital P poetry you know, where it's like, oh man, I need to know the scansion, I need to know the, the rhyme scheme. You don't need to know any of that. What you need to do is sit down and write something that sounds cool in your head. Uh, and then maybe, if it sounds cool in your head, you say it out loud. And you're like, oh, that, that sounds cool out loud too. And then you start asking yourself, am I saying what I really wanted to say? Or does it just sound cool? So when I'm writing rap, sometimes I'm just like rhyming and rhyming and rhyming. I'm like, oh, I'm not saying anything. Uh, I haven't said anything. I've just rhymed for a minute. Uh, so I think that's like a really interesting moment in writing a poem. You look back and say, how can I make the two meet? When you're sitting down to write, you're trying to like, over-intellectualize your life and you're trying to find like the really cool, sexy thing to, that'll impress people, but there's something back there that you don't think is either of those things, but you really want to write about. Um, that's generally uh, where some of my favorite poems have come from. There's a poem called uh, A Question I Must Answer, which is about a very constant experience in my life where attendance was being read and my name would confuse the person that was reading it. It's like, I always thought like, oh, I'm not gonna make a big deal out of that. Like, that's just a part of life. But then I wrote this poem uh, and I, and I realized that that feeling that I consistently had and that I consistently suppressed uh, was definitely worth exploring. Okay, performing, it's terrifying, don't do it. Um, no, I'm kidding, it's actually great. <laughs> Most great things are terrifying. Building a performance, particularly if you're by yourself, so it's a monologue, it's all based on repetition. So pick a small chunk, repeat it, play with it, try it different ways until it feels natural, until it feels like that's actually how I might actually say that if I wasn't reading it, right? That's, that's for me, a key. Then you start thinking about when do I wanna breathe and what do I do with my hands? If you're thinking about that, you're worrying too much. People move their hands and they breathe all the time. <laughs> so you don't have to be so worried about what you're doing. You just have to think about the thing that you're saying. If you're doing that, if you're really thinking about what you're saying and, and how it might land on the person that's supposed to be hearing it, your hands can do whatever they want to do. A question I must answer. Every time they take attendance, O-M-I-D becomes a speed bump or a proceed with caution or even a stop sign. But G-E-O-F-F -F -F is full speed and blue skies ahead. His phonetic obstacles are hurdled with ease. G-E-O-F-F -F -F becomes Jeff, a normal word, a normal person instantly. But O-M-I-D gets butchered, shortened or stretched. It becomes a O oh, or a um... My name becomes a question I must answer. It's Omid. Oh, that's a pretty name. Where are you from? My parents are from Iran. I always say, knowing, saying, actually, I'm from Tucson, will only lead to another question. But G-E-O-F-F -F becomes Jeff. A person, not a question. Jeff answers to no one. 